right. Yay. Hi, Kim. You're the only one I know who's here so far. Oh, let me see. Okay. All right. Well, if you're here, I would love to say hi to you. Let me know who you are. That'd be great. I look like I'm a little tie on the screen. I might, I might adjust it. Maybe a little. Sorry. Just feel like I'm a little too high. I did try to get this organized before we started. Okay. Okay. So today I thought, oh, Mr. Tom. Hi, Mr. Tom. I wanted to talk about just my renewed love for weaving. I, I've been weaving for nine years and I think that what happened was I started weaving and very quickly within a few months started selling what I was weaving. And um, I think that that sort of set the tone. I always needed to, because you know, time is money, I always needed to weave quickly because time's money. So I right away, right off the bat, I started implementing efficiencies. I started, everything I did was like, okay, this will work better if I do it this way. This will work better if I do it that way. I bought equipment to make myself faster and more efficient. And I'm telling you, I can weave ridiculously fast, but I can weave one particular thing really ridiculously fast. And that's baby wraps. I'm set up for baby wraps. Everything around me, my whole studio is set up around weaving baby wraps. So I could, you know, when I'm really in my groove, I can weave easy three, four meters an hour. So I can weave baby wraps quickly. But I guess because I worked so hard and fast, and I did all the dyeing as well. And that's really fun. I really love to dye. But I think that I sort of sucked a lot of the joy out of it just by, you know, the pressure was, you know, most of what I wove was pre-sold before. So I didn't want to keep the customers waiting. It was always a hurry, blah, 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 blah. So now I've put that on a back burner. I'm not doing baby wraps right now. I've got lots, I'm selling lots of baby wraps actually right now, but they're selling out of my store. They're already woven. And I've decided to weave things that I want to weave. So this blanket, I, I'm sure you've seen this blanket I just finished last night, I cut off. It's huge and it's completely light years away from what I've been doing for the last nine years. This is like crocheting to me, like it's so different from weaving. It's a whole different animal. I've had nothing but problems from the beginning. I, you know, I, every single step of the way has been a challenge. And it's the weirdest thing, but I've fallen in love. <laughs> like At the beginning, when I first started it, I was saying to my daughter, like, oh, this is so painful. It's so slow and hard. And she said, mom, you're not in a hurry. You're doing this because you want to. Oh, my goodness. It was like a light bulb went off and like a light switch flicked. It's just from then on, everything has been different. I have felt, you know, I just feel so much joy and I'm reveling in the slowness of it and I'm enjoying the entire process like, like I did when I first started to weave. It's like I've just re-found joy and it's the weirdest thing. I feel like it has just kick-started my creativity again. I think I'm, I've always been a creative person and I'm I call myself an ideas person. I've, I'm always coming up with good ideas. I think they're good ideas anyways. But most recently, I have just been on fire with ideas. I keep, I keep telling my daughter, Cecilia, I don't know if she's here or not. I keep telling her, oh, I've got a great idea for you because I can't possibly do all my own ideas. So she's a stay-at-home mom right now. So I'm giving her giving, she has three little kids and I think that I told her the other day she should write a kid's book and I gave her, I even told her like a basic story outline. Oh my goodness. Like 
she's got three little little kids now anyways i i just feel like my whole creativity has been reinvigorated i'm having so much fun i hope you guys can see that you know like i i feel like i've been so bogged down in the technicality of weaving and the efficiencies of weaving and oh my goodness and those things are important but the joy i was missing the joy i just it's just this blanket I've been dragging around with me all day. I took it downstairs to my studio and I trimmed, you know, I had all the, if you saw the video yesterday, I had a ton of, you know, the bobbin changes, a little loose. I, you know, I fixed them all up and I fixed, it was, you know, I had a couple knot repairs I had to do. So I sorted those out and I'm so happy. There's one problem though. Maybe you guys can help me out with this. The ham. I was, I started to clip it. I was thinking, oh, maybe I will uh, run this through the sewing machine, which is how I normally hem because I'm not, I, I, I just, it, I've never been a really patient person to start with. So I was thinking I'll run this. I don't know if this, it might go through my sewing machine. And then I had the idea today, maybe I should be hand hemming it. What do you think? Hi, Darlene. Hey, so good to see you. Um. Do you think I should hand hem it? What do you guys think? Uh, I, I'm i scared to hand hem it. I'm scared to hem it. I'm not sewing it. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say. I was going to say sewing is not my thing. But I actually really like sewing when I, when I sit down at my sewing machine. I enjoy it. It took a long time. I didn't think I was good at sewing for a long time. And I wouldn't say I'm great at sewing. But I love sewing my grandkids' clothes, little little pairs of pants and little diapers and diaper covers and stuff. I love that. I oh, that's a good idea, Kim. Edge it in satin stuff. Oh, I like that. I I like that idea so much. I should go to Fabricland, I guess, and buy something. I'll find something to edge it in. Yeah, I love that idea. Yay! I love these lives. I always get the best, best, best advice. I was hoping somebody would give me some advice. It's so thick. I know it's super thick unless you have a thicker needle. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any really special needles. I don't have a very special sewing machine. It's just a plain ordinary. It's like a singer heavy duty. It, it's a really good workhorse, but it's not, it's not, it's not special or fancy or anything. Uh, hand hem, embrace the slow process. I, <sighs> I'm even worried though, like it's so thick. I'm worried, like, I just feel like I wouldn't get it really super secure. I don't know. I do like the idea of hemming on a trim, even like, um, I forget the, I, I don't know sewing words, the little, um, the stuff that goes, the stuff that goes around the edges. I guess that's like a, the satin trim, but there's another word for it. I can't think of offhand. Maybe, Darlene, did you want to? And stitch this for me? No? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, so that is that's my uh my next goal on this particular blanket. Also, I don't I don't think you guys maybe noticed this. Maybe you did notice if you were with me on last night's live, but I did realize that I switched the pattern in the middle at the fold line. I noticed it when I took pictures. I can't see it with my naked eye. But when I see it on camera, I see it right away, right away. So anyways, but with my naked eye, it's fine. And this is for my son and he's 12 years old. So I know for a fact he's not even going to notice. And if he does, he will not care one single iota. I don't know if I can find the fold to show you. I'd, I'd be willing to show it to you. So that's an edge. Let me see. I'm trying to see where would the fold line be? It would be along here somewhere. I'm not sure. <laughs> so funny. I crack myself up. I'm like, which edge is the fold line on? It's not bad though. You know, I, I washed it and I dried it. And I don't know. I can't find it right now. It's a big blanket. It is. It is. I weighed it. It's nine pounds, seven ounces, which is pretty close to what I was expecting it to be. I expected it to be about 10. So. Yeah, that makes sense because there's loom waste and whatnot. Uh, but I am actually going to put this on my son's bed tonight. I already had it on there earlier. I 
when Indy saw me stealing his blanket, Mom, what are you doing? I said, I need your blanket for my talk tonight. But um, I will get the edges finished. But it, they're fine. They're surged. They're secure right now. I only, I only put clips on one side, not the other. But those are the edges. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He's excited about it, I think. I mean, he pretends to be if he's not. He's really good at pretending to be. <laughs> Is he, he's so cute. My partner, his dad, he tells him he's been coaching him on how to treat women. So when I go get my hair cut, every time I come home, my son goes, Mom, your hair looks so nice. No matter what. Like, he just automatically, <laughs> his dad coached him to tell me that my hair looks nice no matter what when I get home. He says it doesn't matter. He, I know he told him it doesn't matter what it looks like. He just ha always has to say it looks nice. So that's good. So he'll be nice about the blanket regardless. But it really is a great blanket. I am really happy with it. I, I took it down to the couch today and I tried to snuggle with it. But then I realized if I, I thought to myself, if I sit here very much longer, I won't want to get up. So I couldn't really cuddle it. I don't, I don't actually ever sit on my couch. So it was a weird, it was a weird idea, but I thought I wanted to try it out on the couch. And then I was on the couch and I realized I don't even like sitting on the couch. So it's not what I do. It's not, I'm going to just leave it on my floor there. Anyway, so it's, it's the only thing I'm weaving right now. I do have multiple looms. Um, actually laying in bed last night, I thought I need to start. So way back when I very first started this YouTube channel. And I mean, like that was, I don't, I don't know, 2016, maybe I started a course. I've talked about this before, so you may have heard this, but I started, uh, like, uh, I try, I decided that I really wanted to teach people how to weave on YouTube. So I did like episode one and I think I, then I did episode two, learning to weave episode one, learning to weave episode two. And they're really bad. Like they're really bad. They're terrible. There's the lighting's horrific. They're just bad. I mean, the information's good, but the video itself is really, really, really bad quality. So, but yet those videos continue to get views every single day. Like how to weave episode one gets views every single day. And I'm kind of embarrassed by it and I want to take it down, but I'm also, I'm also really close to finally getting my channel monetized like where it won't actually, well, it'll probably still cost me money to run, but whatever. Um, so I'm thinking if I take it down, I lose the watch hours. I need watch time. So the more people watch, the closer I get to being monetized. So if I remove it, I lose those watch hours. So I'm leaving it up, but I want to start, restart it and do it right and do it with better quality and better lighting, better everything. So I borrowed a loom from a friend. It's actually right behind the camera. And my plan is to use that loom because my looms are pretty, my AVLs, you know, they're 16 shaft AVLs fully tricked out and they're not what a beginner is going to be starting with. So I decided to, I, I needed a smaller loom. My dad's going to um, sell me one, I guess, that he has a nice, perfect one, but my dad lives three hours from me. So in the meantime, my friend Anne, she just lives maybe 15 minutes from me. She loaned me a loom. So I am going to start using that loom and start. I, I'm just trying to decide if I'm going to do just a scarf, something with a narrow warp. Or then I think, you know, more useful would be a tea towel. And I love tea towels. So maybe I'll do, I don't know. I keep debating tea towel or scarf. Anyways, I'm going to do one of those. I'm going to start that really soon. I'll start it maybe next week. Really soon. I'm going to start that anyways. And then I'll be making videos just about that and like learn to weave. If you're a weaver, you, you don't need to watch it, but I mean, it might be interesting. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I can, it's not even how I normally weave. Like I said, I use these fancy looms. Oh, let me read what else your comments say. Binding. That's the word I was looking for. Binding. Um, yeah, it's so nice that it's washable, right? It's just all cotton. That blanket that I just made is cotton. Yeah. So back to my weaving. Yeah, I'm planning the, so I've got sort of two, I kind of make videos about two things, right? Like vanilla things and baking things and weaving, sort of where I've landed with my videos. 
and I've, you know, I've got a we are, sorry, I've got a vanilla video coming out soon. It's vanilla 101. So if you decide you want to make vanilla, but you've never made vanilla before, you don't know where to start. It's going to, I basically hold your hand and we walk through the process together, right? From ordering your beans to bottling your beans. It, I get you through the whole process. So there's that. And then the weaving series that I'm planning. And this is, I am planning to go to Florida in January. And I'm hoping that during that month that I'm planning to be away, I will be able to visit several weavers throughout the United States and do studio tours. Cause I miss doing my studio tours. And I just, the problem is my local area, I've done almost everyone I can, I've done everyone I've asked that would is willing to give a tour to me locally. So I have to go farther afield and it's winter and I, it gets, the days are so short and my eyesight is so bad when I drive at night. So I just haven't been doing this we the weaving studio tours or studio tours. They don't have to be weaving studios. I've been doing pottery. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I've been going to pottery class and I'm kind of thinking I would like to do some pottery studio tours too, because I think they're really interesting. I think any studio is interesting. I would be interested in going to even art studios where they do, you know, fine art. I just love studios. You love my studio? Yeah, I I love the studio tours too. I love, love, love going and visiting other artists in their space. I just, I love it. So I want to do more of that. And I have one more to do in um, Norwood. It's not too far from here. I sh I'm going to try and get that done this month. And then after that, I probably won't get any more until I'm on the road and heading down. So I'm looking for some weavers between say Toronto and Florida. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a path. We can go wherever we want. We usually meander around. We're never usually in a hurry. And we, my partner and I, we tend to fly around by the seat of our pants and we, <laughs> we just go where the wind blows us. We went to Florida just before the pandemic. We left, we left. People thought we were crazy. I'm sure we left in January. People were saying, where are you going? Florida. Yeah, but where? Oh, we don't know. We literally didn't know. We didn't have, we just, we drove down there. We were planning to be there for four months too. Well, we didn't end up, we didn't, we only ended up being there for two months, but we just meandered our way down there. We got there. We found a house. We rented it. <laughs> just like, it's, I, we just, that's just how we roll. And it usually works out for us. It always works out for us. So we don't we don't get stuck into any big schedules. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm really, I might have to put out the word or, you know, either that. So I might do some tours on my way down, which would be nice. And then when I'm there, hopefully there are lots of weavers in Florida. I know there are, I see them, see them posting here and there. I'm always keeping my eye on people online on Facebook. I'm always wondering where do they live or anyway. So yeah, I'm hoping to get lots more studio tours done. I would like to get a whole bunch done and have them banked up so I can just put them out every Sunday, just put one up on my channel and I don't have to be trying to find a weaver or somebody who's, you know, who's going to let me tour their studio. It, it becomes, it's, it's happy. I love doing it, but it becomes a little bit of a struggle to, I, I can't even tell you how many emails I've sent out and how many people I've called, like, hundreds and you've seen every single positive response I've had I've done a studio tour with them so it's lots of work getting them anybody watching if you'd like me to do a studio tour I can only go so far right now I mean when I'm traveling with my partner is different but right now when I'm here I'm near I'm in Peterborough which is you know you know it's it's about a couple of hours, maybe an hour and a half east of Toronto and three hours from Ottawa. In the summer, I don't mind driving three hours each way, three, four hours even to see somebody. I can do that. I, I just try and set up more than one at a same. You know, if I'm driving to Ottawa, I'm going to want to see two or three people if I can. I went to Waterloo and did a couple, three. I visited with three different people. That was a lot of fun. 
Anyways, I love doing them. Okay, so I'm going to see what else. Oh, so I had made notes more about just being passionate about my weaving. And I really wanted to say that, I don't know, going slow with the weaving has been so revolutionary. It sounds ridiculous because I think that weaving is a slow, it takes a long time to weave, right? Like weaving is not a fast hobby, but I don't know, feeling the thread go through my fingers and I, it's almost a sensual exploration. I'm making these blankets and I feel like I know they're for my family. You know, I know they're for my kids or it's just for my family. So I just feel so connected and I'm and I remind myself constantly while I'm working, like, oh, these are going to be for my, like, my grandkids are going to cuddle these, like, for sure, my grandkids are going to cuddle these blankets, and, like, for sure, my family, like, I just, <sighs> fills my heart with so much joy. I am so excited, and you know what? Perfect or not perfect, I don't even care. I also, I'm like, I'm like a squirrel. I just saw a squirrel. I really want to make, get a little, I have. I guess I have tags that say Robin's Nest Weaving on them, but I wanted to get a special tag, make a nice tag for these blankets that will have my name and the year, maybe the date that I made the the, the blanket, just for future generations. You know, sometimes like I have a quilt that my my great great grandmother gave my grandparents as a wedding gift and I used to use it all the time but it's so raggedy now I tucked it away in a box and I feel bad about that but it's like it's falling apart and I don't want it to fall apart anymore but I really love using it too it just warms my heart maybe that's I didn't even realize until this very second but maybe that's why these blankets mean so much to me because I've had that experience. I've had something my great, great grandmother made and it's been on my bed and I've loved it, love, love, loved it. And I know it was made with love for my grandparents, you know, like that's so special. You're making, I'm making you tear up, Bella. <laughs> Bella's my daughter, by the way. Oh, she's going to have one of these blankets. So that's special. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice, Bella, if I had my name and whatnot on it? I just think that would be nice. We'll see. I'm going to see if what I can come up with. They probably have something at Fabricland that I can buy. And I have fabric markers, but I'm just afraid they'll wear off over time. Maybe I need to stitch it. That's better. Stitching, stitching won't wear off. Yeah. Oh, I was, I had made a note here before to say that even though I've made, oh my God, I've made so much beautiful fabric. I've made fabric that just breaks my heart. It's so beautiful but I've never felt the same way about, I've never felt this way about something I've woven, even though it's, I've woven the most beautiful things. And people would say to me, oh, it must be hard for you to sell your weaving. It never was. Like I would love it, but I was always happy to sell it. But these blankets, oh my God. Like I'm going to be happy to give them because I'm giving them to special people. But I, I don't know. I know somebody asked me today, oh, how much you have, or how, she asked me how much time I've spent to weave one of these blankets. So I actually crunched the numbers and I did, I took, it took me about 10 hours to create the draft, which is longer than I probably should have, but it was complicated. And then it took me about 10 hours to, uh, to dress the loom, like, you know, beam it, all that. And then, but those, so those hours will be divided between the five blankets I'm making. And then it took me seven hours to weave it. And I'm just on the phone, honey, or I'm on my live. Can you set it right there, please? Thanks. And so anyways, all the math worked out. I've each blanket co cost me, cost me about 15 hours. So 15 hours and a couple hundred dollars in yarn. So that's pretty significant. I mean, imagine if I was trying to sell those, it would be a lot. I mean, I, I wouldn't even want, I mean, I guess I say that. I mean, I, I was selling baby wraps for whatever. They're not cheap. So I guess people would maybe pay for them, but I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I feel like if I sold them, it would steal the joy away from me. 
And I don't want that. I don't want that joy being stolen from me because I've just had so much pleasure weaving these. And I don't, I don't want to sacrifice that, you know? Hi, Pat. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay if you're late. That's fine. Pat, I, I know this is like a one-sided conversation, but I feel like I, I know you from somewhere, right? I'm sorry that I don't know where I know you from, but I know I know you from somewhere. You remind me. And is it, I don't know. I'm going to let you tell me where I know you from because I've got some ideas where I might know you from, but I'm not sure. It might just be from Facebook. I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyhow. Um, so in other news today, I saw my optometrist. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been switching glasses quite a lot lately and I've got a new prescription. So I guess I'll be switching glasses again shortly. Yeah. my And if you're a weaver, you know, like your eyesight is everything. It's so, it's such a struggle. I had perfect eyesight before I started weaving and like maybe two years into weaving, my eyes started getting bad. It's just my age, right? But it's been a downhill spiral ever since. I It's the most frustrating thing. My daughter, Bella, she's always said, oh, mom, it's because you're, you're so lucky because you had perfect eyesight until I was into my 40s. And so even a little tiny bit, like when I needed a 0.5 prescription for like reading glasses, I was devastated. And I don't know. It's just been... I don't know. I say that's so important when you're a weaver, like how slaying that reed is so hard when you can't see properly. And my stepmom, I said to her recently, I have not given you enough empathy with, she struggles with her eyesight too. And I just, I just was not very sympathetic. I mean, I wasn't not sympathetic. I shouldn't say that. I just mean, I wasn't as sympathetic as I should have been. I just didn't realize how horrible it is when you can't see properly and you're trying to slay your reed. I find that really frustrating. So I've had some eye problems. I actually spent a day, maybe last week, like basically in bed with the lights out because my eyes hurt so much. But anyways, I'll be getting, these glasses are helping and I'm going to get new ones again. So no more reading glasses for me. Now I'm in bifocals or whatever they call it, um, transitions or I don't know. There's a word. I'm sure somebody knows it. It's like a bifocal. Darlene, a saying, I know what you mean, sentimental things. I had my grandma's toaster, had that for 25 years. <gasps> wow. Oh, you were almost in tears because it was hers. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny, right? A toaster. You know what I have? Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I have um, a jar of my grandma's, she canned tomatoes. I have a jar of her tomatoes. She's been dead since 2007. And I have a jar of her tomatoes in my cupboard. Like I've moved twice with those tomatoes. I actually said to my partner, one day when I'm not like around, can you just maybe throw them out? And he's like, what? They're your grandmother's tomatoes. I'm not throwing those out. And I said, I can't eat them though. Like they're, you know, they're old. I can't eat them. And I can't throw them out. And I also don't know that I should just keep them for the rest of my life in the back of my cupboard. So I asked him if he would throw them out. I don't, I don't think he's going to though. <laughs> That's like such a silly thing, but you know, we get attached. I was super, super, super close to my grandparents and I still miss them every day. Gosh, I, I feel like I'm tearing up even just talking about my grandparents. My grandmother, like I said, she died in 2007, my one grandmother and my closest grandparent, that was her. She lived, I grew up next door to her. I was at her house every single day. She was like a second mom to me and she taught me to garden and she taught me to be kind and love other people and cook and bake and be a good person. Not that my parents didn't, my parents of course did too, but I had a special relationship with my grandmother. You'll take the tomatoes. <laughs> My daughter, Bella, she doesn't throw things out either. Bella, you don't want to hold them on to them for the rest of your life. I remember my other grandmother, I had a can of her pears for many years. They went through two moves with me and I eventually opened them and ate them. <laughs> they were still good though. They were good. And they were pears off her pear tree. 
and she actually had moved out of her house and into long-term care for a few years before she passed. So I don't know how old those pears were when I ate them, but they tasted great. And they reminded me of my childhood because grandma always had a pear tree. Oh, it's funny how things take you back. Anyways, you know what? I keep the tomatoes. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Bella have them. She can keep them. I am not sentimental. Am I, Bella? You tell them. I'm not sentimental. Like, I don't keep things. I'm not a keeper, but some things. There's just little things that I do keep. I don't want to, though. I don't want to be a keeper. I don't, I don't like holding on to a lot of things. A few little sentimental things. Homemade things, I guess, are different. I don't know. Anyhow, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I, I think I've given you, told you everything I had to say. I've been talking nonstop for 30 minutes straight without stop. Oh, Pat, what are you saying? Me too. Our paths have crossed. You're a wannabe weaver. Um, Pat, do you, do you live local to me? Is that, have we met in real life maybe? I'm not sure. You tell me if, if we have. Um, I want to do live chats every day until like close to Christmas. I do have a weaving guild meeting on the 12th, but I might do, I like doing this. I like six o'clock. It's a nice time to do a live, but I might do some during the day as well, because not everybody's free at six o'clock. I know one of my daughters is, you know, putting her kids to bed right now. And the other daughter just got off work, although I see she's here. So I don't know. Anyways. Um, if you have ideas, you know what, maybe I'll put another post up in the community tab and you can comment. Please people comment in the community tab. People click, click on it, but they never comment on it. And the comments really, you know, it's like I need, that's why I like the live because I get some feedback from people. Like I love it if you comment on the videos or you comment on those community posts that I make just to let me know where you're at. Uh, you live near Hamilton, huh? Pat Lawson. Do you want a bed and breakfast by chance? Maybe, possibly. I may have known you from that industry I used to work in. Stream the guild meeting. Oh, you know what? It's our Christmas meeting, but that would be really fun, wouldn't it? Darlene, what do you think? Should we stream the, the, the uh, Christmas party? <laughs> eh, I don't know about that. That would be fun, but I think I'd have to get too many people to agree. Anyways, I'm going to say goodbye for tonight and I will come back tomorrow at six and hopefully I'll have some new things to tell you. Maybe I will go to cost or um, maybe I'll go to fabric land tomorrow. Look for some binding. Then I have to figure out how to do that, but I'll figure it out. All right. Pat Lawson. No. So we need to talk. Hmm. I don't think we've met. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And let's meet back here tomorrow at six. It's Saturday. Is that a weird time? Let's just do it. I'm going to call it six o'clock tomorrow and be there or be square. <laughs> All right. Bye for now. Thanks for showing up and hanging out with me.